Welcome once again to Garden Wise Adventures and today we have a special treat. We're here with Neela Willis and her low hoop house. So as I've talked about a little bit earlier, I am really interested in possibly starting some winter gardening and have not known where to start. It looks like Neela has a lot of it figured out. So let's introduce yourself and tell us how you got into gardening. So my name is Neela Willis. I grew up in Chicago. Um, but I spent my summers with my grandparents in Wisconsin. My grandpa always had a huge vegetable garden. And so that's kind of where I started from. Um, but came out here, went to BYU, got married, settled in Lehigh, and I started kind of gardening, not really knowing what I was doing. I uh, did the Rodale Garden Book of the Month Club. Oh, that's neat. So I got a lot of information by just reading the books that I would get every month. In 2002, about then, um, I took a gardening class at Thanksgiving Point. Great place to take gardening classes. Yeah, and Larry Sagers was the teacher. Oh wow, so you got the best of the best. I got the best of the best, yeah. and I took uh, every gardening class that they had. And it's literally born fruit. Your yard is gorgeous. Thank you. You know, it's it's been a labor of love, a lot of labor. Mm, I don't know about the yeah. love so much. Sometimes there's arguments. Yeah. Uh, so what got you into winter gardening? Because in Utah, it's so cold that most people is like, okay, I'm done. And, yeah. You know, until like April. Right. So last year, um, I decided that. I'm going to get with the program. I'm going to have a spring, a legit spring garden. I, I went to the nursery and I bought a whole bunch of seedlings, you know, starts, and I build up the bed. I do square foot gardening and it all grew and I, yeah. and I wouldn't water it. I wouldn't anything. And, um, and it grew great. It had so much produce and it was wonderful to be able to be eating out of the garden so soon. So then I planted the summer bed and the stuff got, it got too cold. And then I was like, ah, oh, fine. So we, we built these beds so that hoops could be um, just super easily attached to them. Okay. And so we put the hoops up and we covered it and I had to go and buy a whole bunch more <laughs> seedlings. And, um, and that garden grew fantastic I just kept it covered I watered it so when did you twice. start and then when did you take off the cover so I put the cover on like it must have been the very end of May and I kept it on for at least two weeks and I didn't even look I just like I watered it really good and then I just left it I like that <laughs> I'm and, not into tons of work. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and when I took the cover off, everything was just so lush and nice. And there were a few things that were super tender that were on the edges, like okra yeah. and the cucumbers that they didn't make it. Um, these two garden beds we built this fall, and they're not quite done, even though we've kind of started filling it up with bits of this and that. Um, and they're made out of redwood, and they're super sturdy and they last forever. And I, we've been using redwood to make beds, which it's pricey, but- It'll last. It'll last. Um, and um, we've been using that for, oh, about 20 years now that we've been doing our beds this way. And so how old are these beds over here? 2017. These ones were built in 2017. Okay, Three, yeah. Five in the middle. And, um, now, did you have plans that you used, or uh, did you just made, come up with... I, I just made them up. I would, like, see things online, and, um, and get inspired, and then I draw pictures and fuss around with things, and... Um, I love it, and you have seats at the end. Yes because you need a place to rest when you're gardening. <laughs> you, you definitely know gardening. Oh, and they're really well made too. I love it. Okay, so let's look at your hoop house. How did you make it? Um, so I, 
wanted to show you, this is what we did so that it makes it super easy to do the hoops. So we bought um, PVC and then we cut them into... So is this oh, a one inch? Um, no, this is bigger than one inch. What we did, very scientific, is we went around in, in Home Depot and I grabbed the skinniest, cheapest PVC pipes to use to make the hoops. Uh -huh. And then I went around with the better PVC to see what would fit the best. Very scientific. Very scientific. And then also we have um, trellises that we made out of copper pipe. So I wanted to be able to put two into one of these. And oh. so I also got the same pipe that we used to make the trellises. So I was able to put two of those in and separately just one of the PVC pipe. And so that's how I chose the size. So when them. you say trellises, do you put the trellises in the garden beds? In the... Oh, wow. And then just take them out when, and they can be moved around. And, and it sounds like you don't have to disassemble a lot. You just pull them in and out. Yep. And then I use strings. I just tie strings to yeah. them at the top and the bottom. And then just like wrap like tomatoes around them and everything and they don't go anywhere. And Oh, I love it. So yeah, yeah. these are really well engineered beds. Now what are the ones with the caps on them? So the, the caps are the same thing. I just don't love um, op opening up something and then there's a spider right there. So Aha. So because I'm a spider little, control. Yeah. So yeah, we have lids for them all and so you don't need the lids. So they don't really do anything except for keep some bugs out. I love it. Now do you have anything growing now? Yes. Let's see. There what kind of plastic did you use? So this is um HDX six mil plastic that you can just get at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, we bought a 100 foot roll, it's 10 feet wide, and that was about $60. Uh -huh. And this bed here is 18 feet long. So right. then I can make six, well not six, mm, probably four, because you need long, it to be long. So oh, you can okay. Close it up on the ends. But, um, so I can make about four long beds, and I only have two beds, and they say it doesn't last long, but we put this on in um, the end of September because we had that cold snap. Yeah. And so we put it on then. And so, you know, people will say, oh, it'll only last a couple of months. And it's been free and it's great. So it's not something that's going to last years. This no. is a one season. Yeah, one season, maybe it'll be two. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty cheap. Um, and then I bought from Johnny's Seeds um, online um, a 250 foot roll of Agrabon 30. Oh. And so. You know, so you have both layers then? Yeah. I have multiple layers. And because there's. There's the plastic, then there's the agribond, and then when it's really cold, we put another blanket right over the plants, and that's it. And we'll leave it th like that for days. If nobody wants to come out, if it's too cold, it's, it's snowing or whatever, it's yeah. snowing, it's raining, whatever, and it's fine. So, so now, how do you get into it? Is it really hard to get into? No. So high-tech rocks to hold the ends. Yes, we all, we all need those. <laughs> we probably have them even. Okay, so you put the plastic, then the agrabond right under the plastic. Right. And then, if you need to, over the plants too. Exactly. Oh, 
okay. So so now I see. So you don't have to pull the whole thing off. You've got the strings to hold it up. Right. So you can just push it up to where you need it and yep. then access everything. Yep. And so then we just recently added um, pieces of wood to go between the hoops to hold down the fabric because the plastic comes down on the outside, but the fabric right. stays inside. So it keeps it close right on the soil, which keeps it warmer. Right. Oh my bird, look at this. You have got stuff in your garden growing. Yep. So it looks like oregula and lettuce and peas and carrots. Carrots. Oh, down there, there's um, some Asian cabbage and uh, beets and daikon radishes and leeks. Oh, this is really exciting. And we've got broccoli here. And I grew every oh, single bit of this from seed planted right in the garden. When do you, oh, so you planted the seed in the garden? Yes. So you journal it, it looks like. Yeah. That's, yeah. that helps a lot. It does. So we planted um, the very end of August, everything from seed. Okay. So it was August 29th and 30th that we planted and so then we had the water on, so I just take the hose and mist it every day, and and the, everything came, not everything. There were a lot of things that actually didn't come up, uh -huh. and I ended up replanting um, the very end of September. And so yeah, we didn't do get this all set up until the beginning of October, like the 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 beginning of the second week of October. This romaine here came up in with the first planting in the end of August. Okay. And and so did that arugula. We come out maybe every two or three weeks if it hasn't, because it's been kind of a mild fall. It's been very mild. So yeah. we have actually been able to just like keep this opened up and let the rain and whatever come and water for me. You, yeah, because the days are not usually under freezing. I and mean, today it's a little different, but yeah. But yeah. even today, it'll get up to in the 50s in here. So we'll open it up. Oh, wow. And so it'll get more sun and it'll get the breeze that, you know, keep the mold and mildew. And, and I like how you've used the straw between the beds. How thick is the straw between the beds? And how well has that worked? I think it's at least two inches. Uh -huh. And I'd rather that it was maybe like three or four inches just because it's a lot nicer to walk on than mud. That's the yes. Huh. Oh, this looks good. Yeah, and here's... Now, when did you plant these little babies? So these little babies were planted the beginning of October. Oh, wow. And that's, you know, usually a time where you don't... You know, right. You really can't plant anything. Right. And these are leeks right here? Yes. And these were planted... They were planted, most of them were planted August. The end of August. August. And then I planted some more. So the little wispier ones were planted in October. Now, were these also by seed, direct yes, sowed? Yes, everything was by direct sowing. Oh, wow. What do you think is the limit of temperature? Because this year has been a very, very mild winter. It has, but then it's had these like shockingly cold, like, yeah, just like out of the That's blue. true. They've, these plants have gotten down to at least 18 at my house. I don't know what yeah, it got it's here. 16 degrees. Your plants got down to 16 degrees. What do you think is the limit before you start seeing die off um, with this kind of hoop house with no heat? I would say, I don't, you know, I don't know. I can't even guess because, um, like, I would assume that if it got below zero, I would think you'd start losing something. Start losing stuff, um, and probably start losing the things on the outside edge before the inside. Right. And actually, we have a soil thermometer in here. I was I just saw that just as, it, or the thing that was hanging. And I was yeah, wondering that's, if that's, that's a thermometer. That's the thermometer. And so What's right the now, temperature? the temperature is, um, I think like thirty-eight. The soil so it's above freezing. Yeah. 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 growing this stuff in the house because like you can grow microgreens in the right. house and and stuff like that I think that's a lot more work and you're gonna have a lot more bugs 
Yeah. And and I can't keep and, things and, watered properly in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So um, every now and again, we come out with, I have a big um, galvanized watering can and go through and water everything really good. And you can see where there's plants, it's wet. Right. Where there's no plants, it's, it's dry. So all that is just dry. So the plants, like, the when plants was the last time lot. you watered them? Um, about a week ago. Yeah, because this is this is plenty moist. Even when you touch the dry area, uh -huh. it's not really totally dry. No. So the super important thing about all of this are these strings, which hold the um, fabric and the plastic to the hoops. Right. Um, and so we, tr since I do square foot gardening, I have these eyelets every one foot and then I just string along and then it makes perfect little one foot squares right and then so at first we tried to just tie the these um, this twine to these and it didn't work because the fabric and the plastic was too long and it wasn't making a tight enough seal okay so then we um, did eyelets down here at the bottom uh-huh and we just did them where there's hoops. So that it'll pull it against the hoop. Right, so then we can tie it super tight. Um, and we just, uh, so each one of these is tied. So it's kind of like a big loop. And it's yeah. just tied there. And then up over the top right. on both sides of the hoop. Right. Oh, you do it inside and outside, it looks right. like. Right, so, um, so this is the one that you were looking at here. Yeah. So that's so. for for the plastic and then we have them separate so like if I wanted to if it was like gonna be you know in the upper 30s at night but I was like still concerned about it being cold then I could just have the plastic all pulled up but keep the, the fabric, fabric down and so it gives oh, yeah. options for controlling the temperature um, and I think I mentioned before that I we went to yeah, these had to. Um, sticks to keep it down tight against the soil because that's what keeps keeping it tight against the bed keeping it tight against the soil is what keeps it warm and the other really important thing is that you have to have another hoop at the very end of the bed so that you can tie yeah so it's like right right there so you can tie it, tie this last one, because we you couldn't tie it if this was the last hoop. You oh. couldn't tie it. So we had to get another hoop. And I think we just um, uh, pounded rebar into right. the earth. and then, that's what I've looked at doing. And then um, cut it so it was shorter. So it's a little bit shorter than the regular ones. And... Um, and so th this hoop is what keeps it from, it keeps it sturdy. So there's one on this end, one on the other end. Okay. And then it's long on each end so that you can bring pull it, it down, over and pull, it, pull tight. it tight, and use big rocks to hold it down. How well does it hold up to like winter storms? Perfect. Oh, it's been, wow. No, I... Yeah, at first I'd be like peering out. Is it okay? Yeah. Your baby. It, yes. The only thing is that when it's opened up, then I have to make sure that um, I just like tuck the end. Oh yeah, just around. Just tuck these in. But they have to be tucked in well. Tight, yeah. Um, and I've even taken some extra twine and just tied it tight so that the wind couldn't do anything to it. Because we've had like warm, windy days. Yes. And if it's left down, then it comes and it beats on the plants. Okay. So it hurts the plants. It's not that it's going to tear it up and take it away. It's going right. to it's it's ruin plants. your plants. Well, this is fantastic. You've thought of everything. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, well, thank you for joining us on this adventure. I love what you've done. Thank you. I think you've inspired me. 
Okay. I am going to think about this for next year. Yeah. Well, think yeah. about it for March. That is true. I don't have to wait until fall. You don't have to wait until fall. Okay. Yeah, you said you started yours in spring. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I hope all of you think about this. Think about winter gardening. It's not as much work as it looks like. I'm feeling very inspired. So go out, have a wonderful garden adventure, and maybe we can extend it. Thank you.